Hey everybody, it's Joe G from the new 8-Bit Heroes. Thanks for checking out this video about NES Maker, the tool set that we built to create actual hardware playable cartridge-based NES games without ever having to write a line of code. All right, today we want to start looking at customizing this. So far you've seen us use Julian, our character from Mystic Searches a lot, and Mystic Searches is the game we're creating that ended up facilitating the need for a tool like this. Uh, a lot of people seem to be asking, oh, so you can only make Mystic Searches clones or adventure games, and, and no, that's not true at all. And we want to start showing you how you can customize this, uh, even with the only the engine that already exists. I, I loaded up a, a blank one. I, let's just start on a random screen out, this screen right here. So I'm gonna set, this is my starting screen. I'm going to put myself in the middle of the room um, by giving myself a starting screen location. Um, and you know what, I'll, I'm going to make a blank black asset as my first asset here. Um, and I'm just going to call, call this, uh, black ground or something, save that it's walkable. So that's going to automatically fill in as default on my screen here. Um, but I want to start messing with my player and I want to show you how we can edit the player um, we go to game objects and we go to player and I went ahead and erased um, the player so we can just start from scratch completely uh, now Julian is from mystic searches is two by three this is the size of his sprite maybe we want a smaller or a bigger sprite. We're going to make a two by two sort of Pac-Man-y character. So bear with me. I'm going to time-lapse creating a really crappy Pac-Man character. Okay, so this is a really crappy Pac-Man character. Uh, uh, this is one frame of his animation. Uh, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it in frame three, and I'm going to paste it. In fact, I'm going to paste it into all of these. So right now he's a static character. Let's make him animate in a really, really crappy way. So on frames two and four, I'm going to have his eyes animate. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to make a, another frame. So bear with me. I'm going to quickly do that. And that's going to use this tile right here. Okay, so you can see he's kind of going to animate like this. He's going to kind of be blinking. Um, you know, if you were wanted to spend some time, you could make his mouth chomping. We're not worried about that. We just want to show the concept. So copy that. Paste it to four. Okay, this is him moving to the right. I'm going to name it right. I could name it anything. I'm going to put right anything to demonstrate. I can name it anything. So this is just for me. I'm going to rename that right anything. And I'm going to copy frame one. I'm also going to make a left nothing, which means nothing. It's just for my reference. And I'm going to add that. So now I've got a right animation and a left animation. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to flip it. So now I've got him moving left and flip it and i'm also going to get that second frame here copy it go to here paste it flip it paste it flip it so now his left will look like this okay so now i've got some basic animations done um you notice i only have left and right but in my game i uh, in mystic searches for instance i have eight directions, um, diagonals up and down, everything like that. And I, I do in this because I haven't made any modifications as well. So when I look at my uh, player's animation info, this should look familiar if you're watching the videos. It's generally the same layout as the monster animation info. Now this will be changing slightly, but the concept is exactly the same. You create animations, you assign which animations each direction shows. Um, so we have eight directions, but we only have left and right. So what do we show for down? Well, I'll tell you what. For down, we'll use left. For all of the right-facing ones, we'll use right. For up, we'll use right. And for all the left-facing ones, we'll use left. So we'll just do that for, for now. And and um, there are better ways to handle this uh, for, for like a, a fighting game, like a, a beat-em-up or something like that. But let's go with this for now, um, just because it's real quick. 16 pixels deep we'll give him a max speed of 10 we'll give him a full acceleration speed so he just zooms ahead no jumping at all in this game um 
I'm not really worried about this stuff, just filling it in. Actions. Okay, let's give them an animation speed of, I don't know, 10, I guess. And I'm just going to go ahead and put all these in at 10, um, just so it, don't, it doesn't feel like I forgot. This stuff is the stuff that's all going to be very different for the hero engine, depending on the genre that you're using. Um, this is how you set up the AI when it's a monster. Uh, you're going to have a lot of different options when it comes to your player. He does have a bounding box and a hit box. I'm going to use the whole character for his bounding box. Great. So now I have a character. And you saw how quick I was able to create that character. Um, and if I go to overworld now, it's going to be in the middle. And I can go to test, export, and test. And here we are on the custom emulator. And there's my Pac-Man looking character moving left and right. That's just a really quick look at how we can create a custom character. How can I create your weapon? Okay. So I guess this guy will have like a tongue that comes out or something. So he'll have like a, a tongue that comes out of the bottom of his mouth right here. So I'm just going to, to make it easy, I'm going to use... Um, the same palette and we're just going to have like a angry tongue that sticks out like that. We can get more colorful if we wanted to, but just for now. And again, animation info, bounding box. I'm going to give him the entire bounding box. Whoops. Sometimes it's quicker just to do that. Actions, not worried about any of this stuff. Depth in pixels, it's eight pixels. Don't have to worry about any of this stuff. There's no animation. Okay, it's just one thing. Um, and, you know, since it's, it's honestly, I could give it, uh, I could make it, yeah, I will. You know what? That's what I'll do. So I'm going to make two different frames so we can see this is the end. So we can see how I can change like that. And I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste, paste, paste. And that's my weapon. Right. And I also need a weapon left. Oops. Weapon left. And I'm just going to flip it. Copy it. Paste. 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 Now what I can do is I can go to my, uh, just hit on game objects, and this shows me um, where the offset will be for my weapon, depending on the way that I'm facing. So with down, I obviously want it to, to go, you know, look, I always want it to look like it's coming out of his mouth here. Um, before I do that, I'm sorry, one thing I've got to do. So now I'm going to go into animation info. I'm going to make sure that all of these correlate with the way that I told my hero to be facing. And now if I just click on game objects, this is showing me the offset of my weapon when my weapon appears. So I'm going to actually have it like coming right out of his mouth. Um, so re what I could do really easily is for each direction, so something like that. Now this will be transparent, so you won't see this black. You'll see the, the character's face. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually um, have it come out a little bit further like that. Okay, so four and ten. I I need to remember that for all of the directions that are left, it's four and ten. So. Four and ten. Four 
and 10, four and 10. And now for the right directions, I just move it over to the right side. And you can see for each direction, I mean, if I, if I was really using a, a eight directional character, I would put it here for up and right, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 20 and 10. So right is 20 and 10. Upright is 20 and 10. And down right. Did I get them all? Right, upright. Yeah, I guess I got them all. Up. There we go. 20 and 10. Okay, so now um, when I create, let's see what happens. All right, so you can see the tongue sticks out of my mouth whenever I attack. I use the attack button. And that's sort of how we can set the offsets for weapons and uh, the source of your projectile. So maybe you want your laser gun to, you know, shoot straight out, but you want to kick as your melee attack or whatever. You know, there's all kinds of things that we can do with this. All right. So, uh, you know, it's great to see this as a character that I created from scratch. I'm going to start from scratch again, and I'm going to show you how I can create a quick character uh, with four directional animations. Uh, based on graphics that I'm pulling in from Photoshop this time. So I'm going to make a two by two character and you can see I've got this very small RPG ish character that I've pulled in uh, from Photoshop and I'm going to just construct a character using these graphics and I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this as well. Um, I just want to explain what I'm doing to start with. So uh, I'm, this is his idle position in frame one, and I'm also going to put that in frame three. And then in two, oops, in two and four, I'm going to put his sort of stepping animation. And that's very common in RPGs, you know. So what you get is this sort of back and forth look like this. Right. Okay, so this is going to be called um, walk down, whatever I want to call it. I'm going to rename that, and I'm going to pick up from there. So let me time lapse this and create the rest of this character. Okay, so now I've got four different types of animation. I've got walking down, walking left, walking right, walking up. I'm gonna do something similar when I go to animation info where down is gonna be down for sure. Down right, I'm gonna make down. Uh, down left, I'm gonna make down. And all the up directions, I'm gonna make up, up, up. Now left is gonna be left and right is gonna be right. So I'm defining, i um, using this animation um, the, or this action type um, these are the animations that will show based on those directions. Details. He's 16 pixels deep. Um, he's got a normal speed of, I don't know, 12. Uh, acceleration speed again. Let's make him accelerate fast. No jump. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I just like having values in there, so I don't think I forgot. Um, animation speed. Um, da -da 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 I think this is the best way to do it like this. Um, okay. A bounding box. There we go. All right. So I don't have to worry about any of the actions, anything like this. This interface is again, going to change a little bit and it's going to be based on your input and you're going to be able to tell it. You're going to be able to give it different animation types and different actions based on the input that you're getting, the, the triggers that you've set up. Um, so right now they're, they're sort of hard coded. So this is my player. He should be ready to go. Um, maybe I'll have to tweak the animation a little bit, but other than that, he should be ready to go. Go to overworld. He's going to show up right here. I'm going to export and test.
and there we go. There's my character that uh, I just built based on graphics that I pulled in from Photoshop. So that's how we can start to uh, uh, customize our game and make it look unique and make it look like our own. Uh, but next, I really want to dig in to show things that no longer even resemble uh, Mystic Searches that were made with this tool using the same sort of uh, concepts that I've, I've already shown. So uh, check out the next video. It goes right in tandem with this one. If you want to see more videos about Nest Maker and how to create your own NES games, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and help us get the word out further by sharing this video on social media.